Yes, guys, good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone doing? Thank you very much for joining me again on this Tuesday afternoon, guys. Big up to everyone here. Appreciate it as always. Know the love from me to you. Appreciate it. Guys, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, all that good stuff before we start. There's already 50 people in the house, so please go straight away. Go and smash that like button. I would appreciate it. Uh, big up to some people in the chat. Hope you're doing well. Up Russell, big up to you. Uh, big up to Dad, Victor, James, Aya, Fozzie, Honesty, Defensive Dining, my podcast in the house as well. Ivor in the house, Redbird in the house. Big up Redbird, been a member for 13 months. Uh, we're going to get to that question a bit later in the show, Redbird. So I've starred that comment, my friend. We'll get to that in a bit. Big up Lee in the chat as well. Uh, you never walk alone in chat, Scottish Bear, Daz. Big up to you, beautiful people. I hope you're all doing well on this lovely Tuesday afternoon. Big up Frankie, baby, in the house as well. Big up man like Jay. Hope you're doing well. So, guys, this is basically... I've been, I've been thinking about, over the last 24 hours, all this news about Ruben Almerin coming to Liverpool. And, look, I still don't know how much of it is paper talk. Um, but it looks like it's definitely happening. Obviously, obviously, with the newspapers and the media and stuff like that, they push agendas depending on what they want to talk about. So, obviously, uh, I believe the report from the Liverpool Echo is saying there's no real talks between Ruben Almerin yet and Liverpool and people in Portugal that I would say probably have more of a no and understanding to say there is talks going on right now. So I don't know who to believe, but what we're going to do, we're going to have a bit of fun with this show, guys. We're going to talk about the possibility of Ruben Almerin coming to the port and playing 3-4-3 there. You might have seen something I tweeted out earlier today. It's also on the thumbnail for this video, the formation that Ruben Almerin might play in this 3-4-3 formation. And he's usually always played a back three. Most of his manual career so far has been that sort of back three. He's played a back four on occasion, but his majority of his career has played his back three. And I was thinking about it and looking at it today, bored at home, just studying it and having a look. And the formation that you see on the, uh, and the lineup you see on the thumbnail today, and if you watch, follow me on Twitter, you'll see on Twitter as well, is that 
players that are available to Liverpool right now. So Ruben Elmerin came in before a transfer window. These are the players he's got available right now to play this formation. And for me, I don't know if we have the players to play this formation. I don't know if we have the play. I don't know if we have the players to play it right now. I, I, I really don't. Look, we're going we're gonna to talk a bit like on the Ruben Almerin thing. So what the thing about Ruben Almerin is his defensive work. Now, you know, with Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp, we defend with a high line, high press, high intensity, and we do a lot of risk in our defending because we're willing to give up chances so we can counter in a very quickly on the counter attack. That's the way we play. So we defend like that with a risk because we feel like defending like that with a risk with the players we've got available gives us a better chance of scoring goals quickly up the other end. You know, we're not a build up team. You know, that's the way we play. And with that risk, we've seen it recently we can see quite a lot of chances. You know, we can see the quite a lot of chances. And the difference between Ruben Almerim, so Ruben Almerim, Ruben Almerim, sorry, when defending in a low block, sporting players stay behind the line of the box in order to keep a compact shape. So when defending, they sit low back, a bit like Arsenal do. Go and watch Arsenal under Arteta. Watch how Arsenal defend when they haven't got the ball. They sit back a little bit low, not like a low block like a Sheffield United will play, but they sit back a little bit and they keep and the players stay behind the line of the box. So they put that barrier up. In order to keep a compact shape and prevent any potential shots from the edge of the box, go go and watch Arsenal as well under Arteta. How many Long shots do Arsenal concede? Like, how many on long shots do Arsenal concede on their goal? Now, how many people get shots away at Arsenal? Uh, and this is quite similar. Um, and, and limit the attacking opportunities. Our team uses an intense pressing style and attempts to win the ball back in the final third. So, he attacks quite a similar way to Jurgen Klopp does with that intense pressing style. and wants to win the ball back quickly, higher up the pitch. But when defending, he will sit back a little bit deeper, sit behind the line and prevent any shots coming on his goal. And that's quite similar to an Arteta. If you look at Arteta at Arsenal, they're the top goal scorers in the league. So they get the ball up in the final third really quickly. They win the ball back. Watch watch Arsenal when they attack, you know, when they press. They are the best at pressing in the league right now. They win the ball back high up the pitch really well. In wide areas, that's one thing. You're, they win the ball back well in wide areas of the pitch, and then they keep the ball in that final third with their possession play. When they're having to defend, when they've lost the ball, look at Arsenal retreat. They retreat. They go behind the line, and they don't play a low block, but they get they 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 defend in that way to win the ball back and prevent shots on their goal. It's very hard to score against them, and that's what Ruben Nalmarin does for Sport in Lisbon. Um, so on a defensive, on a defensive point of view, <clears throat> I like I, I like the idea of Ruben Almerin coming to Liverpool on that defensive point of view, just for the fact that you know I don't know about you guys in the chat, I get a bit irritated with the amount of chances we concede every single game. You know how open we are at the back defensively a lot of the time. You know, it looks like we haven't got a lot of defensive structure at times. The fact that we've only conceded 30 goals this season, I think really tells you how good someone like a Virgil van Dijk is. You know, without Virgil van Dijk, the way we defend, I think we've conceded more than 40 goals this season. You know, and Alisson in goal as well. So them two players stand out so high in that, the way we defend. Take Alisson and Virgil both out the team at the same time we concede a lot more goals because we can't play that way defending without them two world-class players in our team. And we don't get back quick enough either. You know, you know, it's when Liverpool, we press really high, like really high, and we're very intense with our pressing. 
So if Liverpool make a mistake with their passing in midfield or in the attacking area of the pitch, it takes one or two passes to get in behind our defence and onto our goal. That's because we don't get back in a defensive shape quick enough. You know, it, because we've been coached now to attack, 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 risk, risk, risk. So we don't get in our defensive shape quick enough. Under Ruben Almerin, that might change. We might get in a defensive shape a lot quicker under Ruben Almerin, which is um, which is a uh, which will be something different to what we've been seeing under Liverpool in the last uh, the last uh, few years. Uh, big up to everyone, in chat. Big up ends in the chat. Big up Frank in the chat. Guys, if you can, any mods in the chat, could you please put ends. Franks and I saw my man here. Defensive Diamond Podcast is links in the chat. I would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Big up to people subscribing as well while we're live. I do appreciate that. We're on our way to five and a half thousand subscribers. So we're on our way to that six thousand sub mark. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh. I really, really do appreciate it. Big up Sean in chat. I says I agree, but a lot say this is how, uh, but we will soon be complaining. Yeah, with the defensive point of view, we might be a bit more boring on the eye, but it, it's going to be a massive change. It's going to be, it's going to be a big change. Also, it's going to be a change in for Ruben Almerin. Remember, Ruben Almerin is a very young coach. I believe he's thirty-nine years of age. He had, what, 16 games at, um, is it Braga, was it? I can't remember his team. He was at, was it at Braga? He had 16 games of them. He won the cup. And then he's had, like, two and a bit years at Sporting Lisbon as their manager right now. And he's on his way to winning a uh, a double and two league titles in that time he's been at that club as manager. Um, It's an impressive resume for a young man. No matter what you might think of the league or the players in that league, it's still a very, very good resume for such a young coach at 39 years of age. It really is. Yeah, let's get ends up to 2K, man. Let's get ends up to 2K. Doing great stuff at the moment. Got great shows going on. Um, let's get him up to 2K. Let's get my man Frank up to 1K. Frank is working his butt off at the moment. He's doing so many shows. He goes for like three hours every time. He has lots of guests on. Good debate, good conversation. He's all right. Let's get him up to 1K if we can, guys. Yeah. Please go and subscribe to these great people. Um, we got Andrew right with the super chat. Always appreciate it, Andrew. Uh, if we are more defensive and win more titles, I'm all for it because I'm fed up. We're drawing so many games and costing us titles at least the last three title races. That's something we can chat about, man. That's something we can chat about. Big up nightly. I enjoyed Mania, my friend. I thought it was awesome. Um, big up Stephen in the chat as well. Big up Colin in the chat. You're doing well, Colin. Big up James. Look at that legend. Just subbed all three. Yeah, big up, man. Big up. Appreciate it. So, if we bring up some... If I, if I bring up some stuff... so. These are some of the pictures. Obviously, this is from last season, not this season, because the guy is still in there, right? So these are some pictures I found online, right, of the way the setup that Sporting play. Obviously, this is not this season because the guy is in this. This is last season, but you can see that the guy is the DM. You can see how they try and defend and attack here. You got Ray Santos and in, 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 in there. You've got, got Agate sitting deep alongside Quartes. Quartes is the third centre-back. He would usually, you know, be in that in this area over here, just to be on, alongside. But this is how they defend. This is how they build up from the back. Again, this is last season, so don't, you know, but we're just getting a, a pivotal ball look at, at the way he plays here. Again, this is the way, you know, he's set up defensively. You know, look at the rigidness of the defensive work here. Not leaving a lot of gaps. Not too high. I'd say that's a mid, pretty good shape they got right there. You know, if this is Liverpool, 
this back four here would be where Nunes and Ugarte is now. They'd be around this sort of area of the pitch right now if this was Liverpool. And the forwards would be sort of like where the back three are for uh, the, your position right here. So, yeah, this is a different, a completely different setup. Uh, and this is the attacking setup of the game. So you see it here, you've got the back three. Then you've got two here sitting in this attacking formation. You've got the two tens in front. Then the sh uh, and then you've got the forwards right there. What, two staying nice and wide. You've got your uh, link man as the top player. And you've got two sort of tens that can run in behind into these gaps. And you keep a nice defensive shape. So you've got this attacking formation here. Winning the ball back. This, got the ball here, you can see. It can play anywhere around here. And they keep a nice defensive shape in behind. So there's no counter. Just a few images there from what he does. Um. Big up, so sleepy. I think it could, it would work. Um, I think he plays uh, higher here. This goalkeeper is off with sweeping. Uh, I think we're buying Yasha or Diamante if Amaron is indeed the gaffer. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite as he used to play for us, man. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, he's only thirty nine, man. He's only thirty nine. He's a young, he's a he's a young guy, man. He's a young, young guy. Frank said, "Never try to eat pizza while watching Jamie's <laughs> for the crumbs." <laughs> Frank, Frankie, Frankie, Frankie. Uh, Jamie, what happens to our centre mid? Graham Burks, Boslo, Clark, Elliot Jones would all have a hard time fitting into a two man midfield. And this is what we're going to play about with here as well, guys. So what we're going to do. We're going to play about a bit of formations now. Have a bit of fun with this. Hang on. Let me just get screen up. So we're going to play about a bit with formations. And see, we're going to go on players that we got right now, guys. What we're going to do, we're going to play about with this a bit. We're going to do this with players that we got in our team at, right now. We're not, going to, we're not going to go and buy players to put in the team. We're going to go with what Liverpool have right now. Okay, we're going to go with what we've got right now. So, we're going to go with the 3-4-3 three, three that he does occasionally play. We're going to start with 3-4-3 three, three first. And then after that, we can build up to different formations and do different things. But that's, uh, let's go with the 3-4-3 three, three first, yeah? So, obviously, let's put the obvious one, you know, Addison in goal. Right. Virgil, I think, plays in the middle. Right, everyone in the everyone right now, who would you have as your midfield three? Uh, your back three, sorry. So we're playing a back three under Ruben Almerin. That's a that's what he does. Who would your back three be? So I have put for me, I put Van Dyke through the middle, Canate on the right, and Gomez off the left. That'd be that'd be my midfield three. And I think most of you agree as well. So let's go with that. And then, uh, right. right, and then we can move them in a little bit like that. Right, Trent Alexander, what the bloody Trent Alexander Arnold, obviously, as the wing back, I think that will do him the world of good playing in that position, personally. Right, now we need a DM. Now we need a defensive midfielder. And don't forget, we're only doing this on players that are already at the football club. We're not buying players to put in this team just yet. We would do that in a minute. Right, defensive midfielder. Who starts as a defensive midfielder that we have on our books right now? DM. Is it Stefan? Stefan or um, uh, Endo? Endo? All right, we're going in, though. Uh, 
All right. So we've got Endo there with McAllister. Ooh. Right. It's where it gets a bit tricky. What, who do you play at left wing back? Who do you play at left wing back? This is where it gets tricky because we haven't gotten anyone natural that plays left wing back. Now, I've gone on record and said Diaz before to start left wing back. I put Robbo in in my one for the on Twitter. We're not going to buy it out with Nori just yet. This is on players that we have at the club already. So I've gone with Robbo. Right, let's go with Robbo. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go with my team. And then what we're going to do, guys, we'll change it. Okay, we'll change it. So I'm going to go with my team. Okay. Go go with my team, and then we'll change it. All right. This is the team I said that could play if we play this formation. People are going to go mad at this one, but I'm ready for it. Don't worry. Right. So this is the team I would play. I'd play these two as inside forwards. They don't need to be wide because my width is going to come from Trent and from the left wing back, whoever it's going to be. That's going to be my wide players. So I don't need four wide players. I don't need Salah out there and I don't need a Diaz out there. That's why I'm putting Sabozlai here because I believe that's where Sabozlai should play. So I'm going to pick that. That is the team. That is the team I would go like on paper that we have right now. Now I've been talking about Sabozlai as an inside forward since we bought him. Uh, like for me, that's where he should play, either right or left, on that inside forward role. We don't need to be a wide player. It doesn't need to be a wide player because we've got width between the wing backs. So if we've got wing backs, we don't need out and out wide players because, you know, it, it, you just don't need four wingers. So if we're looking at that team right now, that's with players available to us right now. That's with players available to us right now. What we're going to do now is pick the team apart. Right. Would anyone in the chat change the back three? Everyone in the chat right now, let me know. Would you change the back three? And if you are changing the back three, is it someone you want to buy or someone else in the squad? Let me know in the chat. So is the back three fine? If you want to change it, let give me players and we'll go and change it. So give me players' names, guys. Give me players' names. A lot of you saying in Nashiel. Can I swap with Gwaii? Russell. <laughs> A lot of you saying in Nashiel. Gomez a coal wheel. Right, let's go because we have been linked with in Nashiel quite a bit, Lani Yaro. So we need a Van Dyke's is Van Dyke left footed? I can never remember. Nashiel, eh? Okay. 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 Right. Let's put Nashiau in. Yeah. Let's put Nashiau in. Right. Who's going to be everyone's left wing back? Left wing back, guys. Give me a left wing back. 
Yeah, it's very true, Frank. It's very true. That's why I don't know what foot is. Wow. You never walk alone. Does not like endo. Why do you not like endo, man? Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Um, who do we think comes in for Robbo, or do we keep Robbo at left wing? I don't think Robbo's a left wing back. I think he'd struggle in that position, personally. Altonori. We're going out with Nori. Liverpool are very linked. To, uh, I've been linked with him. Out Nori, out Nori, out Nori, out Nori. I'm in Beck. Coach Jones. Anthony Robinson. That is a shout. I think out Nori would be the one Liverpool would look at getting if they can get anyone in. How do you spell out Nori? No, it's. Right. Oh, don't tell me, ain't you? Mm. Right, let me put in Wolves. It might be easier. It might be easier doing it this way. All right, where is he? There he is. There you go. So, Altonorius left wing back, yeah? So, I know he had left wing back. Robbo, the Robbo one, my my issue with Robbo, I don't know if he's got the legs to play wing back now. Or is he 30 years of age, numerous injuries? I don't know. I, I, defensively, perfectly fine, Robbo. It's that up and down. I'm not sure. Robbo, I would, I'd keep their uh, second choice, though. So we've got Inacio in, we've got Altonore in. Um, forward three, because the midfield two is what's going to play, in my opinion. Midfield three. Uh, I, I personally think and Endo and McAllister, if we play this way, are the two in midfield that play. Um, they will be the two. Because you need it. If you go play two, one of them has to be a defensive midfielder. And I think McAllister is our best midfielder right now and is best on the ball and build up play. So, front three, what are we going with? What are we going with? As you can see, there is one man left out of my team. There is one man left out of my team. I've gone with Chotter up top. I've gone with Jotter up top because he's a better finisher than Darwin Nunes. But my issue with Jotter up top in this formation is that fitness is Jotter's weakness, not his gameplay. If Jotter can stay fit, if Jotter stayed fit like Salah does every season, Jotter would probably get 30 goals. But his issue is his, his injuries. So say we take Jotter out, do we put Darwin in? Do we put Darwin in or do we need a striker? Or do we need a striker? Free speaker. Okay, okay. Okay, let's put the Swede in. Right, so Liverpool will go and do that, yeah? So we go and buy a striker. We've gone and buy a ball here. I can never pronounce his name. Gokeres, is it? So we've gone and bought him as a striker. What do we do with Dominic Sabozlai? Because this is the big one for me. What do we do with Dominic Sabozlai? Because I've gone on record and said numerous times that I think Dominic Sabozlai is best as like this floating wide 10 sort of thing. You know, floating wide 10, it's inside forward. Not a winger, not really a midfielder, sort of just playing in that, sort of just playing in this sort of like area of the pitch here. You know, it's more attacking position than rant here. For me, that's I think you get the best out of him. That's just my point then. That's just me personally. I might not be right. 
Does Sabozla stay there? Alexander Sony stays there. Keep him on the left. Can play the 10. Right. So if you can play the 10, we've got to change the formation. See, the problem is if we play Sabozla in the 10, then we've got to play, we've got to change it to two up top. So we're playing Sabozla in a 10 like that. We've got to change it to two up top. Would everyone have Saboz, would everyone have would everyone here have Salah as a, a front two? Would everyone play Salah in a front two if you're playing Sabozla as a 10? You know, would everyone would yeah? That's what I'm saying, Sean. That's why I'm, that's why I put him in that position before. That's why I put him in that position before, because it's like this inside forward wide ten formation. That's what I'm saying. I think he'd cook there. I'm going I'm to leave it like that because I literally think, like Sean said, I think he would cook in that formation. He would cook in that formation. Right. Here's a question for everyone right now. I think I already know Enzi's, uh, Enzi's opinion on this. <laughs> Does Mo Salah stay at the football club next season? Does Mo Salah stay at the football club next season? Just put a yes or a no in the live chat. Does Mo Salah stay at the football club next season? Yes or no in the chat. <laughs> wow. No, 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 no. Yes, no, no, no. Wow. <laughs> Roll me one's uh, out 50-50 on it. No, Frankie says, yeah, that's a negative. <laughs> yes, no, no, yeah, no. Uh, but honestly, he says, I think three, two, three, two, Virgil, Joe, um, uh, Virgil, Joey G, Ebu, double pivot of Curtis Jones and Trent. I think I saw yours on Twitter, honestly. Yeah, I'll get it up. Uh, but I'm very attack minded, even in FIFA. I have I, I, I've seen yours on, on there. Uh, add um, uh, scraps as well. That was a good formation. Yeah, 100 million to sell. Yes, but uh, no. If 100 million comes in, I would sell Salah. <laughs> army. Are you the leader of the army? Ends? Is that what you're saying? Are you the leader of that army? <laughs> Is that what you're telling me right now? <laughs> Guys, we've got 200 people in the chat right now. Can you make sure you're hitting that thumb button, hitting that like? Let's get the likes up, guys. I would appreciate it. Um, I don't know what we're doing for likes right now, but we should be close to 100 with 200 people in the house, surely. We're on 60 likes. What's going on, guys? We've got almost 200 people here, and we're on 60 likes. Come on, guys. Let's get 40 more likes. Let's get to 100, please. I would appreciate it. So press that fun button right underneath the video where I'm talking right now. Let's get them likes up, guys. It helps the video. It helps the channel. It helps everything. So, yeah. <laughs> Big up, ends. Um, So say Mo goes, yeah? Say we sell Mo Salah in the summer. Say we, we, we sell Mo Salah in the summer, guys. And we get... So there's rumours that Liverpool will get between 70 and 100 million for Mo Salah. We know, we know who runs our football club now, one Michael Edwards, and he has got no emotion whatsoever when it comes to transfers. You know, he don't care. He, he'd sell his grandmother if he got a good price. If a club comes to Liverpool with, say, a £90 million transfer fee for Mo Salah, does Michael Edwards take it? That's one for all of you right now in the chat. 
if Michael Edwards got given a ninety million pound deal for Mo Salah, would Mo would Michael Edwards sell Mo Salah for ninety million? Would he sell him? Got to be a minimum one hundred. I don't know if we get 100 million for Mo Salah. I ain't going to lie. I think if we wanted to get over 100 million for Mo Salah, we'd have had to sell him last summer. I reckon with one year left on his contract at 31, 32 years of age, if we can get 90 million from him, I think that'd be a great bit of business. I just don't know if we're going to get 100 million. That's all. If we can get 100 million, uh, I'm telling you right now, if the Saudis come in for Salah, and Michael Edwards goes, if you want Mo, it's going to cost you 100 bills. And they accept that. Then Salah's gone. You know, he won't have a chance. You know, if, if Michael Edwards turns around, Richard Hughes, and they turn around and go to Saudi, so if you want Mo Salah, it's costing you 100 million, yeah? And they accept that, and they're willing to pay that, then yeah, you might as well pack Salah's bags for him, because <laughs> they're why turning that down. The boy ain't gonna turn that down. Not a chance in hell. Um I I I, I pers let's just go with, at, at the moment, let's just go with Salah Stain, yeah. Let's just go with Salah Stain. So this is sort of like the formation we'd be playing. Like it's three at the back, there's four in mid like four in the mid, uh two wide wing backs in Trent and Altonori, because we've gone and bought him. They're our wide players. They are the ones basically getting down the wings here, getting these attacking areas. Yeah. So, Bosley defensively, we can go into that sort of formation and then we can defend and attack in this sort of formation. So, if you go back and look at the pictures of them attacking, look back, go back and look at the pictures of them attacking here. Two, di two people sitting back. And then two tens, yeah, two floating tens here, and then your three forwards, yeah. So your wing backs and your striker, right? If you go and look what we've done here, we've got Endo and McAllister sitting back in a defensive shape. Then we've got our two sort of floating tens in Mo Salah and Sabozlai, and then we've got our two wing backs pumping forward with our main striker up top. And that is the way we've uh, we've gone there. So we've gone quite similar, gone quite similar in our one. So we've got the two sitting in Endo and McAllister, the two sort of floating tens in Salah and Sabozlai. And then you've got your, your wing backs getting forward, getting balls into uh, our main striker. Also, Salah can run into these areas here, make himself a nuisance. So Bosley can run into these areas here. Trent can go back a little bit. You know, Salah can come into these areas. And Trent can come into this 10 area here as well. You know, there's a lot of swapping there. There's a lot of interchanging. You know, oh, you know that that is the, the, the ability of playing this formation. That's the ability of playing this formation. So, the question is as well, what a lot of you are asking right now, we have a lot of midfielders. We have a lot of midfielders. We have Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott of this world as well. So, Bozai can apparently play in midfield. You've got Connor Bradley as a backup win back. We've got Trent who can play in midfield. So, let's change up a little bit. Let's change up a little bit now. Let's go that he still plays a back three, yeah? Let's go with a back three still. But let's go to a 3-5-2, yeah? Let's go to a 3-5-2. Let's go with a 3-5-2. There's a lot of chance that 
we could play we could play this differently so we could play all right i'm going to change it all right there's a massive chance we could play this sort of formation here where Trent becomes a midfielder. Where Trent becomes the midfielder in this kind of formation, in the 3-5-2 formation. McAllister is your 10. Trent and Endo is your, your backup two in that DM role. And then Connor Bradley is your right wing back. And then Elton Orr is your left wing back. And then you're two up top. Now, I think this gives us a bit more better balance. Also, you can get more midfielders into this team. So there's a possibility that Trent can play as a DM role in that midfield role. It's also a possibility that you can take Trent out of that role and you can put him back is a right wing back, and you can play uh, a Sabozilai in midfield alongside Endo and McAllister. You know, there, there, there's plenty of room for wiggle, like wiggle room here, right? Then there's two players I've still not put in this team yet playing this way. Where's Luis Diaz? Where's Darwin Nunes? And Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes get into this team. Diogo Jota, Cody Gakpo, Tabozalai, Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones. Where where do they all play? Where where do they all play? This is the thing of playing about three at the back. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is playing that three at the back. You got Seth Vanderberg come back into this team there, and that's a lot of depth. If you are correct, it's a lot of depth. Let's not be wrong here. We've got that team out on the pitch right now. There's no Sabozlai on there. There's no Jotter on there. There's no Diaz on there. There's no Darwin on there. There's no Elliot on there. There's no Curtis Jones on there. There's you know that. Yeah, um, that that that's it's good options off the bench. Can't lie, can't lie. I don't think I'm going to say something right now. Although I want to, if we're playing free at the back, I don't think you need to play Trent in midfield if you're playing free at the back because the position of the pitch that he will be on. On that right hand side, because of the position of the pitch that he'll be on, it'd be attacking. Trent will not be a right back; he'd be a right wing back. Trent will be, look. Trent's going to spend most of his time in this area. You got three at the back that can stretch out like this. Virgil can come forward a little bit. Endo can come back. So Bosley and McAllison go in this formation. You know, and then you've got more of a defensive structure straight away. So, Trent don't have to look. Trent doesn't have to get back here every two seconds. You know, these step across. Virgil steps out. Canate and uh, Niasho say we play these two. Go out wide. Endo sits back. McAllister cuts out passing lanes on this side. So, Boslai fro floats around as the 10. And then you're putting pressure with the fullback, the winbacks, in these attacking areas of the pitch. Yeah, so defensively, defensively, Trent don't have to do as much work as he did not playing a right back. No, not playing right back. But look, that's, look, again, this, this is what I think is very interesting with the new way we might play. Yeah. All right, let's take Salah out. Play two up top. Let's play two up top. Let's play two strikers up top, yeah? In their natural positions. 
Let's play two strikers up top now in their natural positions, yeah? So we're playing them two. We know what Darwin's game's about. You know, I'd probably swap them about, actually, because I prefer Darwin off the left side. Um, again, you got the big man up top. you got the you got this combination up top that could really work. You've got your width in, say, out with Nori, if Liverpool buy him as the left winger. You've got Trent as your right wing back. You know, they're getting these attacking positions. Again, Endo, McAllister would split. Virgil would come forward a little bit as the ball playing centre back. And you're set up like a little diamond in the midfield with Virgil almost like a DM in a kind of a way because he's the best ball playing centre back. But it still leaves you two centre backs back here. And you've got like this little diamond here and this little four up top. So that, so this will probably get the best out of Darwin at the same time. You got wide players, whip from both sides. You tell Trent to stay wide. None of them, no more of this inverted nonsense. I don't want Trent doing this inverted nonsense. I don't need Trent to do inverted stuff with this formation because where's Trent going to go? I don't need him to. So Trent, you know. can get in these attacking positions, stay nice and wide, left wing back nice and wide. And then I've got a nice defensive structure behind this attack. Yeah, this attack. Then I've got Sabozla, I can make these runs late into the box from a more forward position. I've got McAllister, who can operate most of the midfield area here with his ability getting forward. You know, you can drop Tread back. You could drop out with Nori back. And then them two can sit like this. And Endo and Virgil can almost sit as like a defensive midfield pairing at the other end of the pitch. There's so many different ways you can attack in this way. And then defensively, we'd be a lot different. So defensively, you'd you'd probably see something like something like this, you know, like Sabozlai, something Saint Quanda like that when you're defending, you know. You know, can I own Virgil Nyasha yeah, sure, if he's if he's at the club? You know, Trent can get back in a five, make it proper difficult. And then you can put the press on. You can put the press on. So the press comes on the wing back areas, the wide areas. So Bosai puts a press on. Endo puts a press on. Kalisa puts a press on. Virgil can press, not leaving any gaps in behind. So defensively, straight away, you're almost a better team. You know what I'm saying? So the reason I'm using um, Harry, the reason I'm using Virgil, so Virgil's the best ball play midfield uh, defender we got. You know, he's the best ball play defender we got. So, you know, that's why he would step up. You know, he'd step out. But this is the possibility of what Liverpool could look like under Ruben Almerin. But again. I haven't got I haven't got Luis Diaz on this pitch. I haven't got a Cody Gakpo on this pitch and a Harvey Elliott. But that's not an issue. Harvey Elliott can come on, you know, and play the Sabozlai role. Curtis Jones can come on and play the McAllister role. Stefan Basetic can come on and play the Endo role. Conor Bradley can come on and play the Trent role. Luis Diaz could come on and play the left wing back role quite easily for me in this attacking left wing back role. Jota can replace one of the strikers quite easily. Not a problem. So there's depth there. There's depth there. So you've got defensive depth and attacking depth straight away. It's uh, sorry, Jane, but you really think you see this working with Salah in the system? I don't see it. It won't work. Trent playing like a winger, no chance. Salah defend. That's why Salah's not in the team, my friend. Taking Salah out. 
don't even have to defend as a back five at times either. You know, you don't like you don't have to defend as a back five. You can also you can also def look if you look at Quartis here and Ugarte, this is from last season. You know, Quartis is the third centre back, yeah? But he's alongside Ugarte here to receive the ball. Yeah, and they leave the two centre backs here. Look, two centre backs here and the two wing backs are here defensively. Right. But then if we go on the attacking side of it, the two look look at Podra uh, Pero is now plays as first. Look at the wing backs here in an attacking formation. Now the wing backs are like wingers. The back three are the back three. You got your double pivot here, and then you got two tens in behind the striker. So you're right, the way we play, the way Ruben Alberin plays does not suit does not suit Mo Salah. It doesn't it don't suit a, a Mo Salah playing like this. Which is why I wonder if Mo Salah either will be at the club or if he plays free at the back. You know, it, it just, I think playing two up top does suit Darwin because if you go back to his Benfica days, he always played off another striker and that suited him, yeah. I, I, this is my issue with the three at the back with the players we got in our books right now. Salah, Luis Diaz, I don't think suit playing three at the back. Because where do you play? Unless you just play the four three three, the three four three, yeah. So let's get rid of this guy. All right, let's go. Um, Salah. Let's go, Salah. Right. Let's go back to this way of playing. The original way of playing. If we play to get a Salah in this team. You'd have to play this three-four-three way of Mo Salah and Sabozalai as these like inside forwards. They're not wide. They're not. They're not out here because I don't need them in that position because I've got Trent and uh, and um, my left wing back, whoever it's going to be, making them runs there in them wide positions. So, or well, I need inside forwards really, like floating tens almost. And Sabozalai and Salah could definitely play that way. You know, you get Salah more in front of goal. You get Salah more in front of goal, which, you know, would be excellent. I, I, I just feel like Sabozai being the way he plays right now would suit this sort of area of the pitch. You know, if you look at him in his Leipzig days and um, he's when he plays hungry, he's like a floating 10. So he basically plays, he could play, gets more freedom where he can play centrally or out wide in more attacking areas. not up here, not doing this running, this Jordan Henson role that he does now. This is what Zabozlai does now. You know, you've got to give him that freedom for me, a little bit more freedom. So, yeah, it's a bit more of a 3 4 2 1 formation, in my opinion. You know, so there's two floating tens. As we said, the way he plays, there's a there's a picture of it there. They, these are the two win backs. There's your striker, the two floating tens, and the uh, and the double pivot, and their back three. You know, in an attacking position, and that's what would happen here. You know, with with Liverpool, your win backs would come forward like that, and then you'd have your floating ten sort of thing, and your striker and your wide wing backs getting forward there in that sort of position. And again, this doesn't have to be Sabozla. This can be Diaz. If you chose. Oh my god, what am I doing? If you choose, this could be Luis Diaz. Not a problem. Not a problem. In that three four so it's like three, four, two, one formation. 
it's interesting, guys. I think I think it's interesting. Again, I've not mentioned another player. I haven't spoke about Ryan Gravenberch. I don't know how Ryan Gravenberch fits into this system. Now, where would you play Ryan Gravenberch in this system as well? You know, where would you fit him in this system, which is a different, you know, can you trust, can you trust Ryan Gravenberch to be one of Endo or McAllister in these double pivot areas? Could you trust a Ryan Gravenberch to be one of the double pivot midfielders? Would you have to play him a bit further forward? Where do you see Ryan Gravenberch? I, I, I think the same as sort of Sabozlai, maybe. Is that what we're saying? Like Ryan Gravenberch and Sabozlai playing that sort of floating 10 inside forward sort of form, uh, position, maybe. Is that how we see him? Is that how we see him? Like a floating 10 like Sabozlai? You know, I just don't see him more. I think Sabozlai is going to play in this sort of system. It's going to be a bit further up the pitch than the double pivot. But again, squad is about a squad, guys. You know, if you go with that 11 on the first match day and you still got players like Elliot, Curtis Jones, Sabozlai, Gravenberch, Gakpo, Jota, uh, Kwanzaa, uh, Robbo, Connor Bradley, Quiven Kelleher. Look at the squad. Look at the depth. Yeah? Look at the depth in the squad there. You know, they got to come back into that team yet. So it, there's a lot of... But I'm proper, I'm proper interested to see what Ruben Almarin does. I, I am really... Uh, I'm really interested to see what he does. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I think like scraps and end. I think you got it there. Yeah, inside forward middle area. I I I, I think you're right. Sort of like where Sabozlai is playing. No, Sabozlai's first choice maybe grabbing Birch is his is his sub sort of thing. You know. Bit yeah, Aussie, how you doing, man? How you doing, good. Guys in chat, any mods in the chat, if you could put everyone's links who uh, got YouTube channels in the live chat, I would uh, appreciate it. Um, I would really appreciate it. Chat, I'd play some Bosley in that 10 position. Would you play me, Sir Luis Diaz, Jack? So, Jack, would you play sort of Bosley in this sort of like left attacking mid area, if you know what I mean? Would you play me, say, Luis Diaz? Yeah, Jack's going with me. See, Jack, see, a lot of people, like, I said this a couple of weeks ago, and everyone came at me, and I think everyone's like, because I used the word winger. I shouldn't have used the word winger, but I, I literally said, the Bosley is like, be perfect in this sort of position, yeah? Be perfect in that sort of position. Everyone came at me. I think Scraps uh, backed me up. Big up Scraps if he's in the chat. I think he beat me up. At, he backed me up at the time. But, yeah, it's just... He's playing that floating 10 role. And as I said, if you look at the pictures from last season, that these are the two wing-backs, Santos and Porro here. They're wing-backs. But if you look at the way they attack, they play with a double pivot and then two tens sort of like in that attacking area. You can see Edwards being Salah and Kavakis, uh, I can't pronounce his name, um, being, say that Salah there and that's um, uh, Sabozla. I can see that. I can see that playing because I think Salah, you know, is turning to that 10 in a way because he's creativity. You know, his creativity is something else, ain't it? So, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Maybe I'm just the only one. Yeah, and quite as, yeah, like, if you, yeah, exactly. If you go back, you know, and that, 
that's it defending there as well. There's the defensive side of it there as well. And again here as well. You know, it, it, it's an interesting setup, to say the least. Yeah, thank you, Ozzy. I, I've been saying this, and people keep coming at me. And, yeah, big up, man. Big up. Right, we've got a little break in the uh, uh, in the chat at the moment, guys, because um, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the video footage of Gary Neville celebrating the draw. Has everyone seen the video footage of Gary Neville celebrating the Manchester United 2, Liverpool 2 result? Well, here it is. Yeah, that's Gary Neville apparently celebrating Man United's two all draw in his bedroom. So, yeah, big up Gary Neville, man. Big up Gary Neville. Um, <laughs> oh, just a little break in play there. Just a... <laughs> oh, he loved it, man. He loved it. You gotta love it, man. <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> big up Mark. How you doing, man? Oh dear. But yeah, so if Liverpool go line up under um, Ruben Almerin, if he plays this 3 4 3 that he wants to play, as he said, I think Sabozla suits it more than he's playing 4 3 3 for Liverpool right now. In this sort of like floating 10, a left, a, a attack, left attacking midfield 10 sort of position. Again, you're not going to need wide players because you've got your win backs for it. it. It's just interesting. Again, We've seen the defensive pitches, how they can set up the attacking pitches, how they would play with that back two and the back three, sorry, the double pivot, the floating 10. There's your win backs and attacking areas. Because then these two, Edwards, and I can't call fouls, is it? What These two will run into these areas. You know, they will make excellent runs into these areas. So it's definitely, uh, it's interesting. I, I, I'm sort of really excited about the future. I ain't going to lie. It's exciting. So this is my worry. Does it work? This is the whole, the whole thing of this video is, does it work with the players we have now? Can we play free at the back this, with the players that Liverpool have available to them today? Or would they have to buy a lot of players to fit this formation? Does Darwin Nunes, Mo Salah, Luis Diaz, do they suit playing 3-4-3 three, three or 3-4-2-1? Three, yeah. Does where what happens to Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott? Do they get into this team? Or do you go endo with McAllister as that double pivot? Do you play Trent at right wing back? For me, at left wing back, you have to probably go and buy someone. The back three. Can you go with Canate, Van Dijk and Gomez? For me, if you're playing a back three, you're probably going to need six centre-backs for rotation. So we're going to have to buy a couple of centre-backs in. So does it work, guys? That's the big question. Does it work? What I do like, this is what I do like about Ruben Almerin, is that, again, little quotation of Harry Defence, when sporting defending a low block, sporting players stay behind the line of in the box in order to keep a compact shape. They prevent any potential shots on the edge of their box and limit their attacking opportunities. And then Almerin's team uses an intense pressing style to win the ball back. You know, he gets that in, he's got that intense way he wants to play. You know, how he wants to win the ball back. It, it's extremely interesting to me. It really is. It really, I just don't know if it completely fits the players we have now. I think defensively, we can play free at the back. I'm just talking about from midfield to the forward area. Does it work? I 
I think defensively, I think Liverpool will be better next season. I don't know if you guys agree with this in the chat, but I think defensively next season, I think Liverpool will be uh, better. Let me know what you think in the chat, guys. I think defensively, we could be a, a bit better next season. Just because of the way he sets up. Just because of the way he sets up. <coughs> Oh, I have got the worst cold in the world. I ain't going to lie to you. I really have. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is one thing I am being defensively better. Scrap says, what about suppose like right wing back bobbing up, uh, bombing up and down Trent in midfield instead of Endo? Again, that that could work. It's, I, I, do you know what it is? I think it's the full, the, the wing back role. I think Trent is natural at playing wing back, but he's also someone I'd like to say playing midfield as well. But I don't know. I don't know. El Elmerin Junior says, "Yep." <laughs> As this has been working for years, and to change it overnight is dangerous. We want to keep our momentum going. Yeah, I agree with that. I do agree with what Frank's saying there. You know, I think Ruben Almarin will come in with his own ideas, but he will slowly implant them. You know, the thing is, though, with Almarin, the way he plays, he does like to play that intense pressing style. So that would be exactly the same as Klopp. It's just that formation will be different. So that intense pressing style that Klopp plays, Almerin plays as well. So that won't be new on the players, how to win the ball back in positions and when to press and stuff like that. The players already, already know that because they've worked with Klopp for so long. So that'll be all right. It's just a change of formation that'll be different. Because if you know, if you watch, I said this with Arsenal so much this season. Go and watch Arsenal play under Arteta. When Arsenal defend, they go into almost a low block. You know, the midfield three are really close to the back four. There's not many gaps in between the midfield and the centre and the back four. They play in. They stay nice and tight and compact, and then they attack with high velocity, high press going forward. Um, they got that beautiful combination of attack and defence. Where Liverpool. Liverpool don't really get back into a shape when they defend. There's no real shape to Liverpool's defending at the moment. Um, so that's that's the difference between our games. And I think with Ruben Almerin, he'll come in and give us a bit more defensive shape, a bit like the way Arteta defends, where they drop back, you know, stop shots coming in. So I think we'll defensively be better. It's just attacking-wise. You know, there'll be less risk in our game, I think. So it might be a bit less exciting to watch. Um, but it's worth, can he play that free at the back? That's the interesting one. I think only a few players will have question marks with regards to the formation, but we have a good crop of players to flourish in 3 4 3. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like, say, so, so that's our team there. Yeah, Addison goal, Kanate Van Dyke. Say we go and get in the SL. Yeah, Trent, Endo, McAllister. Say we go and buy out an Ori from Wolves. And then suppose like Darwin is salary your front three, yeah? Then on the bench, you've got Quiven Kelleher, uh, Joe Gomez, Kwanzaa, Robbo, um, Elliot, Curtis Jones, um, Luis Diaz, Diogo Jota, Cody Gakbo, Ryan Gravenberch. Uh, Connor Bradley, Bobby Clark. I mean, that's a heck of a squad. That's a lot of depth. That is a lot of depth. Carvalho, if he comes back. Sepp van der Berg, if he comes back. And we don't let him go again. That would be a heck of a lot of depth. You know, our depth for our club is actually really good. It's just that they're injured all the bloody time. <laughs> That's the problem. If you think about our squad, 
we have actually got quite a big squad. Our depth in our squad is actually quite strong. The problem is they're always injured, so we can never use them. This is the issue we got. I didn't even say Stefan Bajetic. You got Steph going to come in as well now. Stefan Bajetic, sorry. You got him to come in as well. That's 12. You've got so many players. So many players to come in. They just need to not be injured. Now, we've heard the news today. I don't know if you guys have heard the news. So the bloke is in charge of, like, recovery and stuff like that. He's leaving at the end of the season. So, yeah, that geezer's leaving at the end of the season. Let me see if I can find it, actually, because... Um, let me see if I can find it, because, yeah, he's leaving at the end of the season. Uh, I don't know if I've got it. I might have retweeted it. Did I retweet it? Who knows? I don't think I did. No. The only thing I did retweet, apparently Addison, Trent, Jota, and Stefan uh, Bartetic are all back in training with the team today. They're all training with the team. I don't know if anyone has... Uh, as uh seen that but they're all uh they're all training they're all they're all training right now which is uh awesome what i'll do i'll get that up on the screen Musiala with Salah money. Look, if Musiala comes in, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, that would be mad, wouldn't it? That would be absolutely mad. But it just shows the potential of our squad. If we can actually keep it healthy, the potential of our squad is actually quite mad, you know. It's actually quite mad. Let me... Uh... I'll get this up if I can. Let me read some of your chats out while I'm here. Uh, highly unlikely they're training right at this moment. Uh, you'd be shocked, man. <laughs> you'd be shocked. Here you go. There we go. There we go. There's the boys back in training. <laughs> They're alive. <laughs> They're alive. <laughs> They're alive. Yeah, definitely, mate. Of course, of course. If we, yeah, why not? We we do something, man. We do something. You got you, you find me on Twitter and all that. We talk. Yeah, Bequeta's going to City by the look of it. We knew City were going to get him eventually. Yeah, so yeah, it's just uh, big up Fozzie in the chat. I'm doing well. Great to see the boys back. Uh, Jot will be the difference uh, from now on along as he keeps his in, in injury free. Midfield two will be overrun. Tony, why do you think the midfield two will be overrun, my friend? Because that's the paper formation, yeah? Um, in reality, so if they play like this, that's sort of like the same formation we got up now. You see Poro and Santos there. They're the, they're the wing backs that turn into wingers, the two tens. 
and the uh, the back uh, and the double pivot, and then the back three. I hear you, man. I hear you. We'll be technically, uh, tactically flexible for once. We could be, man. We could be, we could be, we could be. Russell says no strength in midfield. Yeah, I think we'd probably go and buy a midfielder, Russell. I agree. I, I, I think... I, I think they will go and buy a central midfielder. I do think they go and buy one and let one go. I think because Thiago's leaving, I think Tyler Morton will go back out on loan. I think Carvalho will go back out on loan. And they probably go and buy a midfielder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, K-Mac, I know what you're saying here. No, I actually understand what K-Mac's saying here. I actually understand what K-Mac's saying here. Because if you look at what... Let's take him out for a minute, yeah? If you actually... If we look at what... Um, the way he sets up, it's almost like the third centre-back becomes almost like a DM at times and pushes forward. So if you're playing Trent in that place, he can be that DM that sort of comes from centre-back into that DM area. I get it. I get it. That could work. Definitely. I see what you mean there. I do see what you mean. It's interesting, guys. It, this new formation is very interesting to me. Yeah, I think... I think... Do we need a DM? See, I know a lot of people keep saying we need a defensive midfielder. Who do we need? Uh, if we get a defensive midfielder in, we've got Stefan Bayer, Chesic there, and Wataro Endo, yeah? Do we need another one? Do we need another one? Um, big up, man. Uh, just means uh, JB Jotter is crucial. F, F in the lineup is that player who can control the team offensively. Even now, bro, for me, Jotter should be there. Yeah, I'm with you on the Jotter stuff. I'd have Jotter in front of Darwin. I've got bullied to put Darwin in. Thank God. <laughs> I did really. Um, no, I, I, I'll look personally. I'd have Jotter in front of Darwin, yeah, because he's a better finisher. Um, but the only thing that worries me about Jotter, my friend, is his injuries. That's the only thing that worries me about Jotter. It's the only thing that worries me about Jotter. But I don't think we need a DM pretty much. I, 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 you know, I, I, I know people talk about Basuma and stuff like that. Has Basuma really been that good for Tottenham this season? Started okay. He started pretty well. well. Has he really been excellent for Spurs? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, has he really been that good? I'd say Wataro Endo has been better than Basuma this season. I really would. I would say he's better, man. But... I just... I don't know if even if Stefan Bartetic is a defensive midfielder. I don't know if it's a DM or more of a number eight. A lot of this fan base absolutely loves Stefan Bartetic. I don't know why. He's played like seven games or something like that, and everyone fell in love with him. Um, Stefan hasn't done... For me, personally, Stefan hasn't done enough yet to prove he's that man. He's that player that can play in this team and run the defensive midfield side of it. I don't think he's proved it yet. He's got a lot to prove, and this was his season to prove it, but he's been out injured all year. Again, injuries are his full tie. I just don't know if he's done enough to prove himself as that guy. So maybe we do need a DM, like a monster of a DM to come in. With Taro Endo is then your backup defensive midfielder. And then you've got Stefan, who can be another number eight. Now, Stefan can be maybe McAllister's sub. You know, he's probably as near to McAllister as any other midfielder we got. 
in terms of like what he does with the ball. So maybe McAllister and Stefan are closer together as a player than McAllister and Sabotelai, let's say like that. So, yeah, I think a monster DM coming in would do a job. Really would. Zuba Mendy. Yeah, Zuba Mendy. Yeah. <laughs> Big up, honestly. Big up. Yeah, he was good when he played for us. There's no doubt about it. But what I'm saying is, did, when he played for us, was that a big enough showing that proved that he can be the man? That's what I'm. That's what I'm sort of asking. We're not doubting his ability. He's a good footballer. I would have him in my team. But is he? Have we seen enough of him to know he's the man? That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. Alan Vieira is a good player. Alan Vieira, Viala, he's quite a good player. Uh, no, it wasn't a big enough sample size. That's what I'm saying, Kay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think Klopp loves him. No, I'm not going to disagree that, Christy. I think Klopp absolutely loves Stefan. The problem is Klopp's not here next season. That's the issue. He played close to 30 games, Jamie, and was our best player on the pitch in a lot of those games. Yeah. Very true. Very true. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know what his position is yet. I don't know if he's a DM or an eight either. As I said, I think Stefan is more closer to a player like Alexis McAllister. Because if you look at Alexis McAllister, he plays the six and the eight. If I look at Stefan, he plays six of the eight. I think they're the only two midfielders in our team that we got right now who can play the six of the eight, apart from Wataro Endo. If Endo ain't available, I do believe only Stefan and McAllister can play six or eight in our team out of everyone we got. So that tells me that them two players are quite similar in the way they play. So if we want a more destructive DM, we need to go buy a more destructive DM. That makes sense. But yeah, I do like the player. I won't get rid of him, man. I'd keep him. He's gonna be great for us, man. He's gonna be great. Yeah, he's he, he's got potentially a lot to give. I'd love to have seen him this season. I really would have. I would have loved to have seen him this season. He would have been different, man. He would have been absolutely different. Uh, Jal Polinia. I'm not a big Jal Polinia fan, but he might work in, a, in this formation that we're going to play. I'll give you that. You know, he... he, he, he uh, it could be played that way. Could be playing that way. Yeah, he's fit now, ready to play. I just want to see him play. Let's see what Barella's like. Let's see what Barella's like when he plays. Uh, sorry, Barella. Um, step by step. I'm saying Barella because people put Barella in the chat. There's no way we're getting Barella, guys. Well, Jamie, you don't want Almer in. Uh, did I say I don't want him? When did I say I don't want him? I think I said why it don't why it might not work. I think that's what I said in my thing, didn't I? Did I say if I put I didn't want him, I've made a mistake there. I'd have to change the title. I said why I don't think it'll work. I said why I don't think it'll work. Like the formation, not that Almer might not work. <laughs> I didn't say I don't want him. I changed the title to be less confusing after I finished. There you go. I changed the title after I finished. It'd be less confusing. But yeah, uh, um, yeah, I want Almerin. It's the only one I want now. I'm on about playing this 3 4 3 formation with the players that we have currently. Does it work? Well, I'll change the title. I'll change the title a little bit so it's less confusing. But guys, uh, I'm going to leave it there. Big up to everyone joining in today. I appreciate it. Um, do appreciate it, guys. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, this was just a little fun video looking at uh, uh, Ruben Almarin 
may be coming to Liverpool. We don't know yet. The talks are that he could be. Um, and if he does, he usually plays this 3-4-3 or 3-4-2-1 kind of formation or even maybe a 3-5-2. And will it work for Liverpool? How does it work for Liverpool? Have we got the players to play that formation? How many players do we need to buy? It's an interesting topic and an interesting thing to talk about. So, guys, I'll leave it to you guys. Appreciate all the love once again. Guys, I'll be back tomorrow for a match preview for the Europa League between Liverpool and Atalanta. Until then, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Much love.